Hey, plant peeps, what's up? Um, it's the end of August, kind of going into September, and I wanted to do a quick update uh, and talk about some of the plants and some of the things that I've changed, as well as some of the other projects that I've been working on that are orchid related. Uh, to get started, we got a new little kitty, and he's not, not really a kitty much anymore. So this Clyde. is Clyde. He uh, so far hasn't been doing too much damage. Watch while I'm filming, he's literally gonna chew off one of my leaves. Anyways, he's a British short hair, um, super cute. I have been wanting to get a pet for a while, so, so we got uh, a cute little cat. So he may be in and out of the picture, we'll see. The other thing I will probably like address in this is that there's not gonna be a lot of, um, there's not a lot of things in bloom right now. So part of me is like, I, I shouldn't be filming right now. But it can't always be about the flowers, right? Like part of growing orchids is making sure that they're actually doing well and, and like uh, talking about the things that happen when they're in between blooms. So so I'll cover the few that are, that are in bloom, but for the most part, I'm gonna just show off some of the other stuff and see and, and like show how everything's going. So first up is my Phragmopedium Pink Panther. You've probably seen this if you've been watching previous videos that I've filmed. Um, this plant was one of the ones that I featured in the watering video. And then probably about a year ago when I was doing my plant update, it's the one that I talked about uh, that I was super looking forward to. So it's finally in bloom. Let's let's turn. It's got cute little pink flowers. Uh, there we go. And yeah, it's actually like super vigorous. So I'm I'm like quite happy about this plant because it's like when I got it last year, it had three like growths, and now. I got three new growths and now I have an active, probably three or four more new ones beyond that. So this thing is like growing super fast, which is uh, for me pretty good. Uh, the rest of my collection is also doing fairly well. I put, moved one of the Vandas into the back here because the Vandas at the south window are not, they're not blooming. And so part of me thought maybe if I tried getting some morning sun, um, it's actually a Patra Delight, so. So I think they're a little bit lower light. It's doing okay, I, I still don't have blooms, so I, I think I might have to start growing the Vandas under lights. <clears throat> so these are a few of the other fowls that are at the end of their uh, bloom cycle. This is my giant monster fowl. It's put out a few leaves this summer already. Um, it's getting a lot bigger, which is great. Uh, my fowl stone dance is putting out like a good show right now which is this one here. That one's also not potted in a traditional medium. It's actually potted in uh, peat moss and perlite. It was an experiment because I'd heard about this mud mix being like a really good medium and I was skeptical. And so I was like, well, I'll try it. And it's actually doing like very well, much better than I thought that it was going to do. <clears throat> uh, down here, are the Makotis Patola that I did in a previous video, and they're actually doing like super good. Uh, the ones in the traditional medium aren't doing as well as the ones that are in that peat moss and perlite mix, which is this one. And you can see towards the bottom, it actually has like multiple new growths. I think there's three, so you can see like down on either side, right there. Um, so considering that these are jewel orchid and they're supposed to be like, super high humidity and and like not do well in low humidity i'm super pleased with how they're doing because a it's putting on a lot of size they haven't died and uh i was expecting them not to do well or, or thinking maybe that they wouldn't do well but hoping that they would um this is that uh phalaenopsis zingman anaconda it put out this new leaf which remember last time when i did the video if you watched it, i was like oh man the leaf's kind of small well it's at least evened out and i've got a second one on the go there's a bunch of like super cool like dark roots growing out on the bottom so I think it's going to actually do very well and uh, under my cooler temperatures the spots are getting quite a bit larger so I'm super like stoked about this plant. I'm really glad that I got it. Some of the <clears throat> seedlings that I've got in the bedroom are, are here. They've been doing really well. They've put on a lot of size over the summer. I'm quite pleased. This is probably the biggest one of all of them considering it was flasked like in a flask last year, I cannot believe how big that thing has gotten. Like it's huge. Um, and then the other, <clears throat> the other uh, frags that I have are doing well. So we'll go into the front room and I'll show you some of the stuff out there. 
So carrying on with the seedlings, these are the other batch of seedlings that um, were from the same set. They're obviously much larger now. They're doing way better. And I'm super like, super impressed that I actually have a bud starting right here. And that's on the Phalaenopsis Kingfisher Kailuani King. It should be red flowers, so I'm super stoked about that. I also have a spike starting here on my Phalaenopsis Lauii. So uh, I think next year I'll probably have a whole bunch of flowers, but considering that I deflasked them this time last year, I think I've done like pretty good. And, and I should also mention that there's a bunch of other like seedlings, individual ones that I got that I didn't deflask, but I bought as seedlings. Down here are a few more seedlings and, uh, and basically a bunch of smaller paths and other things, and they're all doing fairly well. Uh, this is my Phalaenopsis uh, Princess Kailuani Chinyo. It's gotten like way bigger. It's huge leaves, but I still don't have a spike on it. It started to put out a spike in the beginning of summer and then it aborted. So I'm not sure specifically why, but whatever. And then down at the bottom here, um, I had ordered these seedlings in last year to get uh, a flasking project on the go. And they arrived and they were all shook up and they were kind of a mess. So I had deflasked them and some of them are doing, like they're doing better than I guess I thought they were. I, I honestly forget the name of these. There's some sort of weird angraecum that was renamed. They have like an upside down flower, but like the roots are like quite large on them. Uh, the ones in the middle are a zygopetalum hybrid. And then the ones on the end are Cattleya guttata alba. And the Gatata are doing okay. They had a bunch of new roots and now the roots have kind of uh, algaed over and turned green. So hopefully those will be okay. They're not dead, so I guess that's good, right? And then uh, just the rest of my like collection down at the bottom. Uh, that is a Paphiopetalum uh, primulinum, the red phase, they're actually fragrant, which I didn't know, and I, was, I sometimes just sniff the flowers to see if they are. And it smells a little bit like uh, tea bags or cut grass and uh, roses. It's like, I actually really like that flower. And the cat says hi. So these are some of the catacetums that I had up at the upper level earlier in the summer. You can see they're all huge. I'm actually, honestly, not a big fan of the catacetums, I think, after growing them this summer. It turns out that keeping them wet or like moist somewhat over the winter worked well, but th they just take up so much room. Like, like they're so big and they're crowding out all my other plants and the things that, that I, I don't really like that. I, I like things to be a little bit more compact and, and, and not to crowd my other plants out, you know? Um, so up here, at the very top there, there's a Dendrobium uh, parishii, which I had got from seed many, many years ago. And the last growth was this one here. And this year's growth is like over a foot long. It's freaking huge. So it's obviously doing much better than it was. And I think that that might be because, because <clears throat> I started doing some pH adjustments. And so maybe that's why. I'll talk about the pH stuff at the end of the video, because I had, like shied away from that for a long time. So I kind of want to just cover exactly what it is that I'm doing. And then these are the rest of the, the front window stuff. There's some Vandas in there, uh, Cattleyas. I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit frustrated because I thought that having south facing windows would mean that I could have Vandas, right? And um, I, I think I'm still finding that the windows cut too much of the light out or they don't get a, a, like enough daylight hours. So I've had the Vandas now, some of them are new, some of them are over a year old. And they're, they're doing, like they're living, they're growing and putting out roots. I, I haven't seen any flower spikes yet though, and it's kind of getting to a point where I'm like, I, I, wanna, I wanna see flower spikes. Um, over here is the uh, Sologeny Pandorata that I got uh, this summer at the show in, in a different video. And it's like doing really well, it's got a new growth, Leaves are not like looking all screwy like some of the catacetums have been because mites seem to leave this one alone, which is great. Um, so overall, that's kind of the, the status of the front room stuff here. 
I'll just go over the other. So one. this is the other window. It's it's honestly mostly not even orchids. Uh, I've got a big sort of tree thing there. I forget what the name of it is. Uh, uh, soursop, right? And then I've got some cactus down in the front that uh, are getting huge, and I think that's because of the pH adjustments. And then down over here are. Uh, some cactuses that make cool flowers that I got from a friend in Edmonton. Uh, thanks, Sean. I, I totally cannot remember the name of what they are right now. And one other thing I wanted to, to show is the miracle berries, which, like, I started these from seed. They don't have a very high success rate. They're doing really well. The miracle berries are largely the reason that I started considering adjusting pH at all, because they come from an area that's super acidic and they, they like cannot tolerate non-acidic conditions. And I, the more that I thought about that, I was like, well, maybe I should try it out on a few plants. And then I tried it on a few plants and then I was like, well, why wouldn't I just do this for all of them being that that's what it is. So, so pH adjusting has helped with specific plants. And then on the rest of the orchids, it, it's had like negligible results. To me, I see a pH adjustment being valuable if, if you want to squeeze the last 10% out. If you haven't mastered light and you haven't mastered watering and fertilizing, then I think that fucking around with pH is like a waste of your time. Because until you figure all of those things out, the, dealing with the chemistry of water is like, it's, it's like a hassle and it's a complicated process. And I'm going to talk about how I do that um, in a minute, but... But I also, there's, there's potential for screwing it up and making things a lot worse than, than what they would be. So if you're a new grower and you're thinking about pH adjustment, master the basics first. And then once you have the basics mastered and you wanna get more flowers or bigger plants, then consider looking into the pH adjustment. Okay, okay so I'm gonna continue talking about pH because, because, ah, I forgot the light was so bad in here. Um, because, pH adjustments important to at least cover because I've been doing it and it's been a, an experiment that I, I, I want to cover and be, be like transparent about. So I use something called pH down. Uh, it is phosphoric acid. It's super corrosive. And I add approximately uh, 15 drops per gallon of water. The problem with that is for a period of time, Okay, so this, this has like a solid particulate in the bottom, which means that the acidity in the bottle is higher at the, like, like more acidic at the bottom, so lower pH, and then less acidic at the top. I think because the water or the liquid is more dense. So if you don't shake this bottle at every time before use, you don't have like a uniform pH level. And I wasn't doing that initially. And so when I first started doing water adjustments, I was using 30... 30 drops, which adjusted to 5.8. And then later on, I tested recently because I noticed that a bunch of my roots were like burning out and not doing well. And so I, I tested the pH and they were at like four, which is not good. And it also means that like for some of my low pH things, I was probably watering them with like, I don't know, probably two pH water because I was giving them like 40 drops. And it I, I should clarify, like I, P, I test the pH, but I don't do that every time. I kind of was like, well, if I figure out the number of drops that adjust it to the way that I want, then I can just use the drops and not have to like check every single time. Well, I, I should have checked more often than I was because it turned out that the, the acidity of the water with the 30 drops, as I was using the liquid further down in the bottle, was, was like way more acidic. And so it was causing a lot of problems. It was actually like killing roots and some of the things were fizzling out. And that's the reason that I like decided to check the pH. I was like, something's going on. Um, so this is where my like caveat with pH adjustment comes from. Yeah, it's a thing that's probably good to do because in the wild, rainwater is about 5.5 to 6 pH. And so plants, many uh, epiphytic or orchids have grown in, to adapt to, to like absorb nutrients that are available at that pH. The problem is when you're using stuff like this, it's really easy to like screw it up. And if you screw it up, you potentially can like do more harm than good. And so, so let my like, my like lesson be helpful to you. If you decide to do pH adjustment, just be careful and make sure that you get a pH meter and check it. And, and that means that there's like a sizable investment because a pH meter is gonna cost you about a hundred bucks 
because you don't you can't use tabs you got to use the electronic one and then this stuff is about like ten ten dollars a bottle you can use you don't have to use phosphoric acid you can use uh, uh, citric acid but but yeah overall for most of the plants I didn't notice major changes there were a few phalaenopsis and stuff that like got huge leaves um, my phalaenopsis shelleriana I got like a foot long leaf but um, this is my phalaenopsis shilleriana and it's it's huge like i'm gonna put the phone like look how big that thing is i have i have an iphone 8 plus so it's like one of the big ones this thing is like it's massive this this is like as close as i can get to my body but that is like one really freaking big growth so i am super impressed i'm glad that the second one is also like coming out pretty well and the roots are like going all over the place so i think that this is one good example of potentially what can happen if you have really great nutrient availability this giant leaf may also be from too much nitrogen so I i'm still not sure if that's a ph thing or like a bad fertilization thing because i at one point in the summer was using all or like a 28 8 so like super heavy nitrogen and lower everything else. And I, I noticed that that there's a couple of the fowls that kind of got these big lanky leaves. Most of them just grew well, but so I, I, I don't I can't tell you, but like, cool, right? Freaking huge. I can't wait for this plant to bloom because I bet you last year it did 25 flowers. I am hoping that I can probably get over 30 to 35 this summer or this winter. Okay, so the last thing that I want, I don't, I don't want to keep going on about pH. Uh, I, I think that if you're, I think that adjusting your pH can help improve your plant growth. I think it's a sm it's a minor improvement, and if you're and if you want to push that last limit, then you should adjust. And if you still haven't figured out all the other things, then I wouldn't worry about it. <clears throat> I do want to move on to the last thing. I've got a side project that I've been working on. I had showed you the video of the Phalaenopsis seed pods that I had created, and and are now getting close to being ready to flask. They're like gigantic, so I've actually decided that I wanted to. Um, do my own flasking. So I bought the media online and I made a glove box. I have not flasked them yet. They are, I'm kind of waiting for at least one of the pods to pop and, and I want to do a dried, dry seed flasking and then a, a green pod flasking. Um, but, but I figure like, well, why not, right? Like I've, I've done the, the flasks, like de-flask plants. I, it would be interesting to see if I can get my own hybrid to, to create some seeds. So, um, spent a bunch of money on stupid, um, fancy flasks like this. They're quite expensive. Uh, I didn't pay for a pressure cooker well, initially. And so I had done these in like one of those electric pressure cookers and you can see there's a contamination right there. Uh, the other six are doing okay. I don't see any other contaminations on those. And it's been like probably three weeks since I did them. Uh, I'm gonna do one more set of the flasks and then I'm gonna pressure cook it, the new set, and make sure that I have like one that actually went to 117 degrees or 121 degrees Celsius, whatever it is for sterilization temperatures. And then uh, and then I'm gonna actually do the, do the flasking. I'm just waiting for one of these pods to open, like I said. So, so other than that, I think that that's pretty much all that I have that's going on that's new. I really wanted to kind of like rip through some things that are going on. Uh, I, this is more just an update than anything. And I didn't have any, uh, I don't have any advice specifically other than the, the stuff I touched on about pH. So if any questions or comments, or if there's things that I kind of skimmed over with the plants or whatever, um, feel free to, to send me a comment down below. Is that here? Maybe it's over here. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon. Bye. A dear sweet kitty, my kitty so cute.